how we should categorize electric current as a scalar or as a vector before moving further we should understand what these two properties are see whenever we are defining a new property in order to completely define that if we required the direction as well as the magnitude then we call that particular property as a vector quantity now for electric current if you will ask me the same question that okay what is the value of electric current in this particular conductor i'll simply say it's 2 ampere 4 ampere or maybe any ampere but i'll not mention the direction why so because the direction of electric current is actually fixed we all know it will always flow from positive terminal to the negative terminal that is opposite to the flow of electrons which are flowing from lower potential to higher potential actually it same like as time time is a scalar quantity though it has both magnitude as well as the direction but time will always flow forward like the things will always grow older they will never return to its original state well now we know the mechanism of electric current we know the quantification of electric current and we also know the direction but i was just thinking that if electron flow is the reason of the current flow then what is its value means what is the velocity of each electron and changing the velocity of these electron will give us any effect in the electric current let's try to understand it so actually what we say the velocity at which any electron is moving we call that as a drift velocity now we simply write that drift velocity as p d now what is the reason behind of this velocity we all know that this electrons are moving due to the electric force or electromotive force i'll write it here simply as electrical force electrical force who is giving this force or with what this force is actually generating actually it's because of the electric field that is being generated due to these two plates how we define this force from the knowledge of electrostatics you know that this force f elc i'll call is nothing but i'm putting a negative sign because we are putting q e so q is nothing but this charge on electron that i'll write it as small e multiplied by capital e what this capital e is it's nothing but the value of this electric field now from the laws of motion i can also define this f electrical as mass times acceleration here mass is nothing but this is a mass of mass of electron now can we break this acceleration into the velocity yes we can we can simply write this m acceleration is nothing vd upon this tau now what this tau is here that one should understand that this tau here is nothing but we call it as a relaxation time relaxation time that is the time between two successive collisions of the electrons now if i equate this expression with this above expression this one what i'll get let's see so to do so we'll simply say that is m vd upon tau is equals to minus e multiplied by this e to get the value of this drift velocity i just have to put this value on left side and i'll be sending everything else on the right side what we'll get we'll get vd equals to minus e e tau times upon m so this is the value that we get for the drift velocity now my another question was that will it affect the current as well let's try it. before that first try to understand how we define the electric current so we are defining the electric current that is the flow of electrons that is the electron flowing per unit volume means if i define a small a small section here let's say i am defining this small section of thickness dx let's say the area is a this is the area area is a now area is a and we are defining it as a dx so what i'll say i'll say that i i that we are defining equals to q by t per unit time here t is the observation time not the tau now this q we are defined 
as n times e or minus n e because electron always have a negative charge divide by t this is our current i now this n what this here n is this n is actually the total number of electrons drawn let's say we have defined a capital n we have defined the capital n that is a number of electrons electrons flowing per unit volume flowing per unit per unit volume that what we'll say we'll say that if we have total number of electrons this n then this capital n is nothing small n upon total volume v how we can define this total volume v total volume v is nothing but actually if you recall from this if you recall from this animation this volume let me mark it here this volume is nothing but this dx multiplied by this cross sectional area which is nothing but a so what we will get we will simply get we will simply get here capital n equals to small n upon v a dx now if i send this expression here i will be getting this small n is equals to capital N A D X. Let's substitute this value of a small n in the expression that we are getting, that we get here. This, this expression I equals to minus N E by T. What we'll get? We'll get I that is current equals to minus n i'll put this capital n a dx multiplied by e upon this we'll write t now if we are talking about the instantaneous current i can change this t into dt so we'll get all in all this dx upon dt we'll get it as the drift velocity vd dx is the amount of displacement dt is the time so dx upon dt with nothing comes out to be the drift velocity thus we will get i is nothing but minus n e a v t this is what we call a expression for drift velocity it's one of the very important formula of our electrodynamics or current electricity that current is directly proportional to the drift velocity and the area and obviously the number of electrons flowing per unit volume now, I hope you got the concept. Apart from it, we also defined one more property that is known as current density. What this current density is? See, whenever the current is flowing in any conductor, it has a limiting value of the amount of electrons that can easily flow. If there are a lot number of electrons in the limiting amount of the area, then there will be a burst of the electron and heat will generate. That will cause the electrical wire to melt. Thus, to sort it out, we define current density. How we define it? Mathematically, we simply define it as current density, we denote it by J, is equals to current flowing I per unit area. Let us try to generate a relation within the current density and the drift velocity, that is Vt. To do so, if you recall, in the previous slide, we just have calculated that current I is nothing but NeAVd. So I'll just put this expression here in place of I, what I'll get the current density J is equals to I N E A V D. I am not including the negative sign that is just to show that electrons have a negative sign. A, A will cancel out, we will get current density J is nothing but N E V D. Now we can also calculate that the drift velocity, how much drift velocity will be required or will able to cause this much amount of the current density. Well, I hope you got the concept that we have discussed so far. Let's try to understand all these with a simple example. What we have here, we have a conductor. In this conductor, these arrows are simply showing the flow of electrons, flow of electrons. And as you can see, it has a varying cross section. Let's say this side I'll be calling as one. So it will be having some I one, it will be having some area A1 and it will be having some current density J1. Apart from it, this is the second side that I'll be calling. It has some current I2, area A2 and 
करंट डेंसिटी जे टू लेट्स ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड वट इज द अमाउंट ऑफ करेंट विल इट बी सेम ऑन फर्स्ट एंड सेकेंड साइड और विल इट बी डिफरेंट लेट सी सो हाउ वी डिफाइन द करेंट वी डिफाइन करेंट वी डिफाइन करेंट एज करेंट एज द नंबर ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन्स और चार्ज फ्लोइंग पर यूनिट टाइम फ्लोइंग पर यूनिट टाइम यूनिट टाइम वट इट मीन्स इट मीन्स दैट द नंबर ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन दैट आर फ्लोइंग विल कॉन्स्टेंट हाउ बिकॉज द नंबर ऑफ अमाउंट ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन और द चार्जेस गेटिंग इन साइड दिस कंडक्टर नीड्स टू बी इक्वल टू द नंबर ऑफ चार्जेस कमिंग आउट ऑफ द कंडक्टर एज देर इज नो सिंक एंड सोर्स Thus, we'll say that the amount of current I one needs to be equal to amount of current I two. What about the current density? Will it be varying or it will also be same? Actually, it will vary. Let me show you how. If you recall, how we define the current density? We define the current density, current density. We define the current density as the current per unit area. Thus, for the cross section first for first side of cross section what we say we can simply say for first side of cross section the current density that is j1 is nothing but i1 or small i1 as we have taken the small i1 upon a1 and similarly we can calculate for second area that is j2 is equals to i2 upon a2 now what can you conclude about this j1 and j2 Which value will be more bigger? That is J1 or J2. Let's try to understand. So in this figure, as you can see, the area A1 is bigger than area A2. What I can conclude here, if I see both of these expression, I'll say area A1 is bigger than A2. Thus, the area A1 is bigger. This J1 needs to be smaller than the area, this current density J2. Why? because area and the current density are inversely proportional well that's all for today i hope you got the concept that we have discussed so far till next video stay connected with tutorial